Welcome everybody. In today's presentation, we're going to look at the communication between Ableton and Arduinos. So why would you want to do that? Well, I used to use MIDI all the time. MIDI is very reliable, but MIDI is slow. It's only 32 kilobits per second. And also the containers are really small, at least when you use the CC containers. It's only 128 points. That doesn't really get you anywhere. So the solution is we just use the native USB interface between Ableton and Arduino. It's a serial over USB. You can ramp it up easily to 100 kilobits per second, and you can use a depth of bit size that you want. I use 16 bits in this case. Let's see what that looks like. You will get in Ableton this particular plugin on the bottom where uh, we can send now a control and a value to the Arduino. The Arduino then just echoes this back and it's then shown on the right hand side. So if I now change the control, you can see here the control changes as well on the receive side. If I change the value, then also that is changed. Then you can see now we have 65,000 points. Uh, so that's quite an improvement over the 128 we would get from CC values. Okay, what do we need to do to install it? Let's go to GitHub. I have, of course, the link down below. We have in this GitHub section, a folder for the Arduino code and a folder for Max for Life. But let's just download both of them. We download them as zip. And then of course, we need to extract everything. The installation now is pretty straightforward. You're just going to move the Arduino code. So let's go into the directory of Arduino code. This particular one goes wherever you have your Arduino files. In my case, it is in documents and it is under Arduino and that's where it goes. Okay, there's already a file there. No reason to copy it again. Then let's look at the other file that we have. That is the Max for Life code. Now, the Max for Life code is just one single file and that one's going to be copied to documents and then Ableton. Then it's going to be the user library, presets, MIDI effects, and then max MIDI effects. That's where it needs to be copied to. Also here, I of course already have it there. I just showed you the whole thing. So it's already installed in my system. Okay, once you've copied those two files, we're going to open the Arduino IDE. And that's, of course, what we're going to control the Arduino with. Now, I need to briefly close the port here on my um, Ableton. Otherwise, it won't work because they'll fight with each other. And you just press upload. It will compile. And that's all we need to do here in the Arduino IDE. So let's go and close that and let's go over to Ableton. Let me start with a new track because you won't have this one installed yet. All right, now, because you copied it to the Max MIDI effects folder, if you now navigate to Max for Live, Max MIDI effects, you will see the echo test over there and you just drag it over to a MIDI channel. And that's all you need to do, you just press Rescan here, select the right COM board, and you're good to go. But for you to be able to use this software, it's very beneficial if you know how it's set up. So let's have a, a look under the hood. And you can do this, let me just briefly zoom in on the plugin itself. You can open up the editor by clicking this button over here. This one will open up the editor. This can take some time um, and let me just zoom in for you guys there. So you'll get a window like this and it will show the exact same layout, but here you can then also change it however you would like. Now, um, this doesn't show the code behind it. And if you want to see the code behind it, you can press the display button over here patching mode and we change here now to the full mode where you can see all the individual blocks and how they're wired together. I also very much recommend on the right hand side to open up the Max console. This will give you feedback of what's happening behind the schemes. 
Now, the first thing we'll notice is this alarm, serial error opening serial port. And you'll see this as well. If I change the value over here, then nothing will be received. So the serial port is not working. And the reason for this is that uh, Max for Live, when you open up the editor, will make a new instance of that plugin. And so the serial port is still connected with the main plugin over here. And that's why the uh, editor cannot use this serial port at the moment. The solution for this is to briefly close the editor, go back here to the original plugin and cl select close port. If we now open up the editor, we'll see that also within the editor, um, it will work. So you got to be very careful with that serial interface. Also, when you want to program the Arduino through your IDE, you need to first select close port in your plugin to free up that serial port. This is the editing environment of Max for Life. In a way, it's very straightforward, but I find it actually really hard to do this flow based programming. Let's go over the basics here. In the upper section, we will see here the interfaces that are required, first of all, to make the serial connection. This actually is a sub function. You can open it by double clicking here, but we'll not go into that. Otherwise, this video would be too long. In essence, rescan just scans the serial ports. You can select with the drop down button and you can close the port again with the close port button. Now, whenever you select rescan or whenever you select a com port you want of course all the data to be refreshed and that's why we send out what they call bang message in max for life that's like a wake up do something message and that goes to the variable refresh and we'll see that in the bottom that whenever a refresh bang is sent um, all the uh, data is sent out to the arduino automatically here's our main block it's called serial a38400. This is the serial interface to the Arduino and it also straight away defines the baud rate. So if you want to change the baud rate and for instance increase it, then you can just click on this and change the baud rate as, as such. Play around with this. I put it on 38 kilobots on purpose. This is nice and slow, and so it will definitely work on your PC. But depending, on, especially on the Arduino you're using, you can ramp this up to 100 kilobits or more without a problem. Here, this is the sub function below where whatever we receive from that sub function uh, send, then that is fed to the serial port and it's sent over the serial interface. Here we see um, a from Arduino variable, and that variable uh, just receives whatever comes out of the serial interface and drops that into the receive section that we'll look at down below. We see here as well a Metro 50. That is just a metronome that uh, periodically sends out bang values. We need to do that with the serial interface to get data parsed through to the from Arduino variable. So that's just something if you want to receive serial messages, you need to send bang messages to the serial port. And that is what we do with this Metro 50. So let's have a look at the lower section of the code. On the left hand side, we see the send. So whenever a value is changed, this value is sent to the um, serial port. On the right hand side, there's the receive section where whenever we receive um, something from the serial port, we interpret this and write this to the receive section. The data structure is based on the uh, MIDI structure for uh, channel mode messages. Now with MIDI, we have um, a, a, a MIDI ID as first byte, and then there's a control byte and a value byte. So the same idea we use for this communication as well but the way we set it up is slightly different. We use four bytes instead of three. The first one I set up as a synchronization byte. It's always 255. I thought this way, you know, the communication would be a little bit more reliable whenever it would lose synchronization, then it would sync in pretty quickly again. 
However, I found that the communication interface between the Arduino and computer is extremely reliable. So I think you might even be able to do it without this one. Also, if you want to um, even make it more secure, what you of course could do is the same as with MIDI, make sure that the first bit is always one with the synchronization byte and with the value bytes is always zero. You would then reduce this 65K values to only a 14 bit signals so 16K values, but it's still plenty, I would say. As said, I think the communication is very reliable. Um, so there's no need to reduce the uh, actual values here to 14 bits. So let's keep this in mind. The first byte we send is 255. The second one is a control value from zero to 255. And the third and fourth are both bytes to um, add up to a 16 bit value. And that's what we do here in the send section. We first receive this um, refresh message whenever someone selects rescan or new COM port, um, then the value here is asked to reproduce its current value. But also, of course, if you change the value directly with the slider, that also generates a new value southbound. And these three lines do not the following. Let's start with the left. The first one uh, is converted to a bang message. And that goes onto this box with 255 because our first byte is always 255. And that goes into a pack um, module. This pack module just takes the bytes that come in, uh, glues them together and throws them to the serial interface. The second byte is our control message. And that goes from zero to 255. Then the third and fourth are the 16 bit value that we want to send over. So for that, we need to split that 16-bit value in two bytes. And we do that with just some simple math. The first one is a right shift of bits. And if you shift a signal with eight bits to the right, then you get the most significant byte. And the second one to get the least significant byte is we do a modulus with 256. All right, let's go to the receive section. In the receive section, it's a little different. We receive ASCII values and we search for the end of line character. And as soon as we receive that, we group everything we receive together, then convert to integers, make these symbols, and then we unpack them. So basically this unpack looks at spaces and separates then the individual integers and gets rid of the spaces in between. Now, the first byte we receive is supposed to be 255. We could implement a simple control mechanism here to verify this byte and make sure that the packet is valid. At this point in time, I did not implement that in Max for Live. I do have this in the Arduino code that we'll look into later on. The second byte is the control. The control is 185 right now, and if I change that, you'll see it change as well here. The third and fourth are the actual value, and that's the 16-bit value that needs to be recombined. So we have the two individual bytes. And so the third and fourth byte are recombined by shifting the most significant byte with eight bits and then adding the two together again. So that whatever value we have here, we also receive after combining the two. Okay, that's pretty much it for the max for life code. And let's also now switch over to the Arduino code, make sure uh, we cover that as well. Okay, so the Arduino code um, first starts off with the definition of a couple of internal variables. These five over here are needed for the com serial communication. These uh, four bytes are the bytes that it receives and the arc state just is an integer that go goes up with every byte that it receives uh, so that you know which byte is supposed to be received when. The next two parameters are only needed uh, for the LED. So I implemented an LED that goes on whenever serial communication is received. And so it takes a timestamp whenever the last time was that uh, serial information was received. T is the current time. And based on that, you can make the LED go on and off. Bytes to int is a simple function that combines two bytes, the most significant byte and the least significant byte, and uh, then just uh, returns an integer. 
In the setup, we define the LED pen that we'll be using to identify serial communication, and we begin serial communication. The serial communication speed always needs to be the same as what we've defined here in Max for Life. So when you do test around with the serial interface, make always sure that those two are the same. Then in the main loop, um, we first take a timestamp of the current time. This is only needed for the LED. And so we verify here uh, whether or not the LED can switch off again. Serial T0 is the last timestamp that there was serial communication. Uh, T is the current time. And so if that is larger, the difference is larger than connected timeout, which I think is now half a second, then it switches off. Whenever we do receive serial communication, the first thing we do is switch on the LED again. Then this loop over here reads the serial value and stores this in the appropriate bytes. Our X state goes up from 0 to 4 and then back to 0. And so if it is 1, we received our first byte. Uh, we store this in CC type 1. This always should be 255. If not, then it just resets, put back our state back to 0. If it's the second byte, this is our control byte, so we store that in CC type 2. If it's the third byte, uh, that is then the most significant byte of the actual value. And if it's 4, it's the least significant byte of the actual value. If we received all four, we can then reassemble the actual value with the bytes to int function. And so here we have the control and the value received. Now let's bounce this back to the Arduino. Uh, we do this by first printing 255. Um, I could of course as well have written CC type one here. Then very important, you must add spaces between sending individual bytes. Otherwise, in Ableton, we can never separate them again. The second one that we send is, of course, our control byte. The third one is now high byte of value. This is a subroutine from Arduino that just uh, filters out the high byte of a integer. And similarly, we have low byte for the least significant byte. Normally, of course, you would not echo data back and forth all the time, perhaps sometimes for verification, but it just slows down your protocol, slows down your program. I only echo here to show you how to send data from the Arduino to Ableton and from Ableton to the Arduino. So I would recommend you to delete all this and start implementing whatever you want to do with the Arduino over here with the data that you've received. So have fun with the code. Likes are well appreciated. Leave any comments down below and see you in the next video.